Hi everyone, it's uh, Jody here. I hope you're all okay. Uh, this is just a video showing the process of me creating two uh, ATCs. The first one that you see here, I've um, just drawn in my drawing and now I'm going in to create the background. I am using um, Liquitex liquid um, acrylics and just pushing them around to get them to how I want them because this is going to be basically a nighttime scene. I've got two witches dancing around a cauldron. I've got some, oh, I can never remember, on the moon, the, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called, the liquid stuff that you put over paper to, to make sure that the watercolour doesn't get underneath. It's like a, a mask, liquid masking fluid. That's what it's called. Okay, so, and that I put on a while ago, and yeah, about a week, and it was between putting it on until when I started doing this. I just flicked some white paint around for stars, and uh, yeah, so this, these little ATCs are actually for a October Happy Hauntings uh, swap. I am a member of a group on Willowing Arts. She's a, it's a British website and Willow, Willowing, which, who is Tamara Laporte, is, um, she runs classes and I've done a few of her classes and I also am in the ATC group. I've only actually done four swap. This will be my fourth swap. So these are going off to America when when I'm when they're finished. And uh, yeah, it's quite fun. I've uh, got some neat ones in in return. So it's just yeah, very exciting. It's like Christmas time every time a little package arrives, and you know it's the ATCs from your swap partner. So if anybody's interested in doing that, have a look for Willowing Arts. Okay, so now I'm on to the second one, and I realised later that I've, what I'm using to draw sketch in my face is a it's a Prismacolor colour erase, but um, I have found that the, when I was paint, you put the paint onto it, even though they are acrylic paints, the paints were activating the pencil and it was making it move around so I think in the future I will try and make sure that I um, use a color that's a little bit more won't be so uh, difficult to get rid of is really what I'm trying to say so she's the girl is holding a crystal ball and I'm trying to get her hands in a way that I like them. I was trying to use my own hand and I first off I had two hands on there and something wasn't looking right. So yeah. I, now we're back to the other one. <laughs> I'm painting in the pauldron. This one probably turned out my favourite. I really enjoyed making this one. I think it's because it was a little bit easier. The other one had a lot more details on it. Basically have used, like I said, I use Liquitex acrylic um, fluid acrylics. They're in the little glass jar with a dropper. And I also use my normal other acrylics. I use um, Golden Heavy Body. Uh, I use Atelier. I use fluid acrylics. I use craft acrylics. I just mix a whole lot together and just use whatever I've got. I've also got um, Distress paints. I'm not sure if it matters too much. Um, I removed the um, oh, shit, I've forgotten it again. And I'm painting in the moon. Um, masking fluid. And yeah, so now I've um, I'm just doing some details around the moon. 
most of the moon will get covered up, but you will see that later on. Uh, just going in, doing some more details. I think I also go in, <coughs> excuse me, with a, use the Faber Castell pit pens. I really like using those. I find that they are really good. Doing lots of more details with the moon and getting the colours around the glow of the witches and well not the glow of the witches but more the glow from the cauldron. I think I'm using the pit pen now to add a few more details, a bit of shadowing. Using the pit pen to go around the outline of my witchy poos and then after that I will paint them in with acrylic paint it's just to help me get the little details so yeah I have to say that this is the the third recording for this I have had no end of trouble so now of course I probably am going to have issues trying to have enough to say. You would think that having said this three times that I would be well practiced but no it doesn't seem to be the case. It's uh, it's not actually easy talking. I, I had I sometimes do put music in the background but because I just have a phone and I find that the um, YouTube editor it takes forever to put the music on and if, if your music is, you actually need to have music about the same length as the video so I just, it's just a bit of a nightmare, I'm not that um, tech savvy uh, I think I'm all right, but I'm certainly not as professional as some of the, well, I know I'm not as professional, I'm very amateur. Most of my videos, or all of my videos, are very amateur. If you go back to the very big first ones, they're terrible, very um, embarrassing. I have thought about buying a camera that does filming, but I'm not actually um, investigated to find out what the best ones are. And then, of course, you've got to have all the other software when you put it on your computer and, you know, the list goes on and on and on. So at this point in time, my phone still serves me, serves the purpose, okay? It can't do everything that I want it to do, but it's still doing a good job. Right, back to the video. This this is um, where I am, like, framing the image with trees. So what I did was uh, dip some tissue paper and fluid acrylic and now I'm putting in it into matte medium I'm tearing off little pieces so it's a real sort of like very textural very 3D-ish uh, and it was very messy very very messy my hands were really black thank goodness that it, it washes off but it was it, it worked out really well I was really pleased with how it worked out I really thought it was a Good idea. I don't know whether I've seen it somewhere else or whether it just came to me, but I was really pleased with how it turned out. Um, so yeah, so I had to let that dry for a very long time because I was so worried that it was so thick that it was going to take forever. But um, no, that it turned out really well. Okay, so back to this one. Now I'm doing. Now the crystal ball is not really a crystal ball. It's more a galaxy orb or yeah something like that so I'm making a um, galaxy painting within the orb and I have used those same paints that I used on the other one the um, Liquitex fluid acrylics because you could just drop little bits in so it was really good and I've just done the first layer, so all the bright pink and purples and yellows and stuff. 
it's just a first layer now I am doing the first basic layers of her face and this is where I realize that that color array's pen is picking up and moving so I spend quite a lot of time trying to get rid of it um, I did have a little bit of trouble trying to get the face how I liked it but um, in the end she turned out not too bad so here I probably chopped a bit of it out because I don't want to bore you because I, I do get sort of um, sort of focused on all the little bit, itty bitty details trying to get it correct but then sometimes the more you look at something your eye can um, correct it for you so then it's not until that's why a lot of people actually take photos of what they're doing I think you see it from a different point of view someone also said just um, look at it in a mirror which makes it different so I mean they're all little hints but you know it's trying to remember to to do those little hints so at this point in time her eyes look very dark they don't end up looking like that so I've gone back in and altered them and yeah uh, yeah I don't know um, I'm starting to run out of things to say already Okay, so in, in, I'll talk about where I am in New Zealand here. It's uh, just, we're coming into spring, which is about time because we've had it such a wet winter. It's been horrible. Everything's, the ground is like mud. And I have a uh, reasonably big garden. And uh, so it's been a bit terrible. Certain things, I've lost certain things and then had a battle hoping like heck that trees come back that because some trees just don't like being in such wet weather but uh, hopefully well normally spring is pretty wet but I'm hoping it won't be too wet and I'm pretty sure it won't be long before we're all complaining about it being so dry so it's funny isn't it okay now with the top of her head I have probably stolen that look from Maleficent um, I didn't really want her to have wild hair or have her hair all around the place and there's not a lot of that part of her head so I went in and did a, a Maleficent um, type headdress and uh, she's got the very uh, severe eyebrows and at the moment she's naked but I did end up putting clothes on her, that's towards the end. Right, at the, this point I'm putting the dark black over the um, orb and trying to get more of a, um, a feel that it is a round object that can be seen through rather than a solid, like a bowling ball, but I probably haven't achieved that as well as I would like to. Now, I've just realized as well that um, you were all looking at a statement <laughs> from me shopping, so that's naughty. Anyway, this, um, me trying to prevent the white from getting everywhere, that was a complete failure. It all just went under that piece of paper and splattered her. But luckily, if you go in quick enough with, the, with a wet brush, you just um, wipe it back up again. It's a quite often used keep all bits of paper and that I just recycle you know it's, it's all such a we're so so wasteful so I try and recycle bits and use them as my um, you know as my pieces of paper that I make a mess on I'm also using a big book that is hiding under the statement because I'm trying to bring the um, ATC is a bit closer to my camera because I can't actually bring my phone down any further. I've already got it on like a, a bendy arm thing that's clipped to a shelf above my head. Um, you'll, you'll see that book later on. And that, the, yes, that was a series of like 12, 14 books. I haven't read the 14th one. My husband thought it was a good idea to give me, I think, book 11 for Christmas like eight years ago 
So I thought I can't just read the eighth one and I might as well go back to the beginning. So I ended up by getting second-hand books from second-hand shops and off of our, uh, we have like a, a eBay type site in New Zealand. So off of a site like that. So I've managed to get just about all of them. Well, yeah, and a, a friend at work, he started reading them. So that's been quite good. So I'm just giving him all my books. Okay, so I'm going in and refining details and fixing things up because her head was a bit of an odd shape. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, fluffing about. I think her eyebrows looked a bit off. They're a bit, yeah, it just defining, refining, and just trying to get things to the point that you're happy with. Putting a bit of blue on the black of her hat to give it a bit more depth and all these sort of things. So that's what's going on. So I, um, with these as well, I've done the back, backs of them. I've put um, torn up book pages on the back just use matte gel medium and maybe a few other pieces of torn up paper so and then I'll I've just um, once that's all dry I've gone around the edge with a, a um, pit pen with a, in a dark grey or a black smudged it all around the edge so it just looks you know that weathered look so the front and back are a complete thing these are actually on just little bits of scrap card my problem that I have with using scrap card is that it doesn't hold all the water and stuff that I put on so I do find that I get quite often I'll, I'll glue two bits of card together then I'll do my painting and with all my heating and water I end up buckling the little card so I have on the other one cut out a portion of the back and carried on doing my painting until I got to the end and then stuck a bit of glued a little segment of card in the bit that I've torn out and then sealed it with another piece of card and then did all the background on top of it just so that they're quite a solid they're solid ATCs there's probably like three layers of card on a completed piece right now I'm putting in the background it's a real mustardy color I did go back in later on and refine put a bit of brick like a little look to look like it's bricks like she's standing in a castle she's in a room with and the bricks are in the background sorry I've gone a bit low on the onto the page and missed out a bit I'm I think I'm going around and putting in some glow from the orb. Going around the edge of the orb on the outside, making it glow as best I can. Lots of bits and pieces. Fixing up the stars to make them more sort of like star shaped. Just a few random amount. One day I might have a go at making a um, asteroid or a comet or something because they look quite cool. I've seen other people do them. On their galaxy paintings, they're really neat. They're good fun galaxy paintings because I don't know where you can really go too wrong. If you do, just put black on it. <laughs> Refining a few more details, getting light on her nose because she was looking a bit sort of splotchy. I 
do go in on the orb as well. I put a coating of um, like a dimensional um, liquid dimensionals. Um, it just gives like a bit more of a 3D effect. It's always good to have a bit of texture and something different and I don't know. These are just truly mixed media, little mixed media objects. It's it's such fun mixed media. Getting your eyes right. Still haven't uh, got up to the part where I put put clothes on her. Just doing more white around the orb. Darkening up the edges of the background getting your eyebrows back in right your eyes maybe doing some eyelashes I thought I don't generally put a lot of eyelashes on them that's the dimensional liquid that I have I've had that for donkey's years can use um, these other products that are out now but I still use I still have a I had a big bottle of this and so it always seems to do the trick right and now at this point I've gone back to the other one and I'm putting a layer of um, oh what's it called I'm terrible I'm just about at the end and now I can't remember what I put on and then a bit of glitter pouring medium Liquitex pouring medium I use the pouring medium quite a lot it gives a really good um, protection it, it gives good protection and then after I the pouring mediums dry I'll I go back in with um, a gloss varnish Liquitex gloss varnish so at this point, I'm putting her clothes on. <laughs> Sounds funny. And I think on this one, when I put the first layer of pouring medium, I went right over the orb and everything, and I did put a little sprinkle of silver, just not a lot, just a little sprinkle of silver on the orb, just to, just because I can. <laughs> And then, of course, I went over the top again with the varnish. Just That just holds everything in place. It's like the varnish is always the final, you know, that's your final coat. You can't really put anything else over the top of that. So I'm just about to the end of this, just putting in some highlights on her hat, whatever that thing is on her head, and on her clothes. Her, ear, her ears stand out a little bit more. And yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with how she's turned out as well in the end. I need to practice maybe a bit more on the orb. Probably should have it like darker in the middle and, and then fade off towards the edges. That would make it look more ball shaped. But you learn from everything that you do. So, you know, it's, it's that saying, keep Keep practicing, keep trying, and you get there in the end. Right, so this will be the final. No, that's the pouring medium on that one. It's a really good thick coating. Leave that to dry 24 hours before you put your next coat on. So that would have been... Yeah, that was me sprinkling some glitter on. Okay, everyone, that's just putting the varnish on that one. That's a final coat, and I want to thank you all 
for stopping by and watching the process of the two ATCs and uh, yeah thank you so much and I uh, will catch you again in the next video. Take care.